an object is sitting on a horizontal surface, two forces are acting on it. There's the downward force of its own weight. And there's the upward force provided by the surface it's sitting on. We call this the normal reaction force. And this is at right angles to the surface. Since the object is in equilibrium, the normal reaction force N is equal to the weight W. In order for the object to sit on an inclined plane, a third force must be present. The weight remains the same and still acts downwards. The normal reaction force is still at right angles to the ramp surface, though it's no longer equal to the weight. The additional force must act up the slope to prevent the object from sliding down. In this case, it's provided by friction. Since N and F are at right angles to each other, it makes more sense to find the components of W that are parallel to the slope and at right angle to the slope than it does to find the horizontal and vertical components of all the forces. It gets confusing if we try to mix up pictures of real objects with vector diagrams. So I'm going to draw a separate vector diagram to work out the components of W. I've marked the direction of the slope. Now I'm drawing an arrow to represent the weight W. I'm not drawing this scale because I'm going to use trigonometry. To find the component of W that's parallel to the slope, I need to first draw the line back at right angles. And this then will give me the component that's parallel to the slope. And this distance gives me the component that's perpendicular to the slope. It's difficult to draw the two arrows on top of each other, but I'll do my best. Because theta is the angle which the slope makes with the horizontal, this angle here is also theta. If you want to take my word for it, that's fine. If you don't want to take my word for it, we have to think about a little bit of geometry. This is the angle of the slope. So this angle is theta. Which makes this angle 90 minus theta. And since this angle is 90, then this angle here must be theta, which means that this angle is 90 minus theta, which means that this angle is theta. I told you to take my word for it. To work out the components of W, parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope, we need to use trigonometry in this vector triangle. So for the time being I call that side x and I call this side y. Then look at the triangle. If theta is the angle that we know, x is the opposite side. So we could write that x divided by w is the opposite divided by hypotenuse, which is equal to sine theta. And that means that x must equal w sine theta. Well, there's no point confusing things by having unnecessary names. So if that's W sine theta, I'm going to rub out the X and call it W sine theta. And similarly for the other side, Y, Y divided by W, Y divided by W is Y is the adjacent side. So it's 
adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine theta, which means that y equals w cosine theta. And again, there's no point having y there when we know that the value of that vector is w cosine theta. So we get the important result, component of w parallel to slope equals w sine theta, component of w perpendicular to slope equals w cos theta. For equilibrium, the component of w acting down the slope must equal f, and the component of w at right angles to the slope must equal n. So therefore we have the equations f equals w sine theta and n equals w cos theta. In the case of the monkey, we had a weight of 5 newtons and an angle of 20 degrees. So the frictional force acting up the slope, which is equal to the component of the weight acting down the slope, is given by F equals W sine theta, which is 5.0 times the sine of 20 degrees. So we take the calculator, 5 times the sine of 20 degrees, which is equal to 1.7 newtons. And the normal reaction force N, which is equal to the component of the weight perpendicular to the surface, is given by N equals W cos theta, which is 5.0 times the cosine of 20 degrees, so 5 times the cosine of 20 degrees, which is 4.7 newtons.